let's jump right in. Uh, pixel fix. What the hell is that? Um, so pixel fix is a font technology that was developed by Dalton Mac to help improve the clarity of letters in modern applications on high resolution screens. Um, and it kind of does so without the large file size increases often seen with traditional screen optimization techniques, um, which we also sometimes call hinting. Uh, the common pixel fix code library is owned by Delta Mark and it's licensed to clients at no cost. Uh, this does not affect the transfer of ownership for custom designs. And I'm going to introduce kind of like the background, why we introduced this and why we developed this and um, a little bit of information of like what it actually does. So we start with the why and uh, this is kind of why. Um, open type font variations or variable fonts or VFs uh, were introduced as an extension to the open type font format in 2016. And while the screen optimization features were unchanged from traditional open type, the practicalities of applying existing techniques to a varying design has proven to be quite challenging. Uh, we in, initially, we have been shipping variable fonts without any kind of screen optimization or hinting because at the time uh, the apps were not yet widely deployed and there was no market expectation of good appearance on screen. Uh, we were getting actually really good smoothness where the apps were assumed to be supported, but you know, since uh, we can see that uh, there's increasing application support and a client desire to use the same fonts um, in more places, and this has become, become a sticking point for us. The most, the, the most widely used tool for applying screen optimization instructions to open type fonts is Visual True Type VTT from Microsoft. And it, in 2018, it gained both manual screen optimization and alternating tools for variable fonts. And we tested this new version of VTT and concluded that it was impossible to manually apply high quality screen optimization of variable fonts, um, at least not in a commercially viable length of time. Um, so we also tested VTT's auto hinter and found that the results were kind of acceptable, but not good. Um, and we had to manually clean up a lot of things. Um, both manual screen optimization and auto hinting of variable fonts in VTT had two main problems for us. Uh, the first one was that the designs would lose their subtlety. So for example, a light on the regular might be hard to differentiate on screen. And the second problem was that glyphs, which changed structure as they varied, were hard to manually instruct and would confuse the auto hinter. In early 2020, this left us with VTT auto hinting as our only viable option for variable fonts. And the results, as I said, were nowhere near the quality of manual screen optimization, but in most cases, it was better than nothing. Um, but we also say, faced a second problem. Uh, in addition to the challenges of hinting VFs, we were left with the question of how to hint both VFs and static fonts of the same family in a consistent way. As an example, when originally launched in 2010, uh, which might, no, I think Veronica was already going from Delta Mark. But you know, in, in 2010, we released the uh, active protest for the very first time. And back then, it consisted of only eight fonts for uprights and for italics. Over time, we added more fonts to the family, but only these eight initial styles received full language extensions to cover Arabic, Cyrillic, Divinar, Greek, Greek, etc. Um, these differences within the family were hard to communicate and caused confusion in the market. In January 2019, we commissioned a large expansion of Active Protest to improve its consistency and usefulness. All of its supported languages will be available in 54 of its weight and styles. So nine, nine weights in uprights and italics, plus like three different widths, extended, condensed, and the normal width. Um, we would also, of course, uh, add a variable font at the same time. We left the question of how to apply screen optimization to these fonts for later, as we knew that the design part of this project would take at least two years to complete. In early 2020, we estimated that because of their extensive language coverage, adding manual screen optimization to Active Protest's 54 fonts would be around 5,000 person hours of work, and this would just not be commercially viable for us. 
Our best option in early 2020 was to compromise on VTT auto hinting for most of the fonts with manual screen optimization limited to the 10 most commonly used font weights. This would still be around 950 person hours of work, which is a lot. So in, 20, in April 2020, feeling that there was a lack of interest in screen optimization for variable fonts across the industry, and the pressure of the first version of Active Grotesque variable font likely being ready to be shipped in the next year, we decided to begin, begin a speculative research and development project to explore these two problems together. The first thing we explored was to identify the minimum that needed to be done to a glyph to optimize it for a modern screen and a modern operating system, given that most screen optimization techniques are still targeting legacy systems. Um, we manually prototype different approaches to glyph manipulation using VTT, simulating what code would practically do to different features of a glyph. We identified that an approach known as soft tint looked best in the environments we were targeting. The idea is to align one side of the stem or stroke to the pixel grid and allowing the other side to be off grid using either the natural distance or control value to set the stem's thickness. Um, usually the outside edges of a glyph are on grid. This was what we chose to explore for our own automated screen optimization system, but there was an immediate problem as we started to generalize it. While this approach retrained, retained the subtlety and distinction of different weights, it failed in exactly the same way as VTT when it came to variable font glyphs, which changed structure as they varied. In open type, each glyph's screen optimization instructions are the same, regardless of which variation of the glyph they are acting on. While this is no problem for around 95% of the glyphs, 5% of glyphs being misshapen is not acceptable for us. Up to a point, our thinking, up to this point, our thinking has been entirely around a piece of software which analyzes each glyph and writes st static instructions into the font file. But it is exactly this static analysis which fails for glyphs which vary structurally. The problem now felt like it had contradictory requirements, but a new idea emerged. There was soon the realization that the VF problem could be solved by splitting the analysis and instructing of the glyph between the file population state and the point of rasterization. So effectively, we were having a set of common functions which operate on similar glyphs using control values from the CVT to guide it in the font file implemented in true type bytecode. The code at this point would be operating on a completely resolved glyph and have access to control values specific to that variation. This would be an analysis acting on the current variation of a variable font, solving the structural variations problem, which has been constant so far. It would be also the equivalent of embedding an entire hinting program inside every font file, which left us with two main questions hanging over this approach. The first one is, is it possible to fully analyze a glyph from within the screen optimization instructions, the instruction set used for this screen optimization known as TrueType Bytecode is a low level virtual machine language, but it is not a general purpose instruction set. Um, it is designed solely for manipulation of geometric point pointer data and lacks many basic features. And the second question was, how efficiently could such code run? Taking more than a few milliseconds for a glyph to appear on a computer screen would be unacceptable for us. We then began to develop a small scale prototype operating on just a few glyphs in one font. A glyph analyzer and hinting program were handwritten in bytecode assembler at this stage, leveraging VTT's bytecode compiler for rapid prototyping. Within a week, our small scale prototype was working and we could answer the two big questions. Full analysis was not possible, but partial analysis was. By splitting the process between compilation and rasterization differently, the results were good enough. And efficiency did not seem to be a problem either, despite needing to execute thousands of bytecode instructions compared to, I guess, 10 for traditional screen opti optimization, there was no perceptible slowdown. So after this small scale success, we wanted to establish whether this approach was viable for more challenging glyphs, more challenging scripts, and designs more diverse than active grotesque. 
To explore this more thoroughly and efficiently, the, pro the prototype code was adapted into our font build system where exploration work was able to continue. In August 2020, we concluded that our approach was commercially viable and our research and development phase ended. Development has continued since then to expand its features, support more writing systems and generalize it to more designs. And we have now taken it to the market under the name Pixelfix. The roadmap for its future commercial development includes support for Chinese, Japanese and Korean scripts. Each family has a conf configuration file that the build system uses. Uh, it takes a couple of hours to prepare the fly for each family. Um, Active code test variable fonts ship on time using Fixifix, and we've been able to add it to many other fonts since then. We estimate that the effort saving so far from using Pixifix instead of manual screen optimization is tens of thousands of person hours, getting many fonts to the market much quicker. Comparing that to the thousands of hours developing Pixifix, this makes for a very good investment for us. The file size increase of adding Pixelfix to a font will vary by writing system and language coverage, but it is consistently smaller than traditional approaches to screen optimization. As an example, for fonts covering the languages of Western Europe, which use Latin writing system, the increase is typically under 10 kilobytes for open type font format and under 5 kilobytes for WOV2, both compared to a file with no screen optimization. Traditional approaches to screen optimization can give a 50% increase in file size, so the download speed advantages can be quite significant. Pixelfix has, has no effect on most Apple operating systems as they ignore all of the screen optimization instructions embedded in a font file and they use their own approach to improving clarity. But quality is improved using Pixelfix in all modern Windows applications which use direct write. Legacy applications, especially those with all, which use all the graphics API known as GDI, do not truly benefit from pixel fix. Their display quality will be only slightly improved when compared to fonts without screen optimization. Um, before I go to the next slide, just a word of caution. Uh, the following slides are showing a magnification of an LCD display. So if you have a condition with sensitivity to light, you might want to miss these. Okay, moving on now. Looking at the actual rendering on an LCD monitor, you can see that the characters remain clear and subtle weight changes are perceptible and family relationships such as consistent excite are preserved. The primary aim of Pixelfix is to present a distinctive present the distinctive features of a design as clearly as possible. While it does not have the same level of control as traditional screen optimization techniques, Pixelfix does still preserve the important features which help characters clear and um, text legible. Pixelfix approach reveals distinctive design features as size increases while still maximizing clarity. Okay, LCD, uh, Slides are gone now, you can, you can look again. <laughs> um, just finally, I want to wrap up with um, a little bit of a look at um, requirements for Pixelfix. Uh, so font files which use Pixelfix are fully compatible with all open type rasterizers. They do not require a special or bespoke rasterizer. Pixelfix output is optimized for modern rasterizers and rasterization modes, such as the current Windows graphics API known as DirectWrite, using CTAA. So all of this sounded a little bit salesy, but I swear it isn't. In fact, we don't have anything to sell here. So um, I hope this was informative. This is like part of our software development team's efforts. And while I would love to take credit for the work, um, I, I had nothing to do with it. And I'm just like it, it won't stop me from talking about it because I think it's amazing, but it was other people uh, at work here. Um, if you have any questions, uh, my colleague Eleni is actually in the audience and you can ask her some questions. Um, but you can also find me on LinkedIn or send an email to bianca.burning at daltamark.com. So thank you very much for your attention and please do have a beer on my behalf. <laughs>